Continuing from the last video, I have quickly added a new symbol basically for a chassis ground uh, so that I can connect it properly. And taking a look at that, basically what I've done is this. It seems like there's the regular ground. I added this chassis ground. I couldn't find this built into Easy EDA anywhere, and I'm probably missing something pretty obvious. I'd expect it to be there, but couldn't find it, so I just made it real quick and gave it a net label of a chassis ground. And connecting that chassis ground to ground through a 250 volt, one nanofarad capacitor, and then also this optional one meg, uh, one mega ohm type of a resistor. So that's what I'm doing for chassis ground for the moment. And that is in line with, I think, what Phil has in his Zetbret design. And then I believe some of you had also commented on this, and it seemed like it was uh, something pretty close to this as far as how all that's being connected up. Uh, I did also go in and change the MOSFET, so comment was made that for my DDR termination power, that's a, a very low voltage, likely isn't enough to actually you know, get that MOSFET to work to show me my indicator. And so if I go back to my regulators, I have these indicators up here. And uh, these are these MOSFETs taking in a signal. And uh, I did for this last one, being that it's only 0 0.675 volts, I figured I'd try out this uh, BSH-103. So maybe it will be sufficient. Worst case, the LED indicator for my DDR termination voltage just won't indicate, won't work. So I'm not too worried about that. And the same with the rest of these, if, if these uh, require a lower voltage, I could probably just swap it out with one of these BSHs. As far as I look at the specs, I think that would be something I could do. Uh, I did connect then my Ethernet Phi, and if I jump over to the Ethernet sheet here, uh, basically I'm using this uh, RTL8211, and this is again coming out of uh, Phil's reference. Uh, for that Zetbret, but basically I've connected that up pretty much following uh, the the example that, that he's given. And I swapped out the RJ45 connector with this one. So this is a pretty big and complicated uh, symbol here, but basically this connector has both the LEDs built into it and also uh, you know, some of this, uh, I think what he was referring to as magnetics. So instead of having this be an external component, it's right within this RJ45 connector. Uh, and for me, that's convenient. So I'm going to go that path also. And I think I have this uh, all connected up correctly. But uh, again, I, I'll need to come in here and just uh, validate, triple check, look for uh, typos and other miscellaneous errors and then compare it to both uh, the Zetbret schematic and then also probably the Digilent uh, schematic for the same type of a board and any other I guess reference designs that I find but uh, so I've got that connected up so this uh, again this RTL going to this uh, RJ45 down here uh, then beyond that I did change the USB-B connection to a USB-AB, so it's a mini USB-AB connection, so that it can do both host and device support. And so I have this sheet here where I'm using this uh, USB-3320, and it needs a 13 megahertz clock over here. It also, uh, I'm also needing to supply potentially power. So this is the component being used for this, an MIC2099. And then I actually have the connector, which again is this AB, mini AB connector. But uh, this should give me support so that I can both act as a USB host or have the FPGA board or SOC board in this case, uh, act as a device, a USB device. I did also connect in an SD card. Uh, I had the SD card, you know, the slot there before, uh, but then I added a level shifter and I think I have the SD card connected up in an okay way. And I have a sheet for that. 
And so for the power translation or voltage translation using this TXS0261.2, this was being used in the Digilent reference design, so I followed suit there. And then I have the card itself and you know some miscellaneous uh, resistors around this to go with it. Then of course, you know, a lot of these signals, like these SD, D0, D1, D2, that goes back to my processing system. And so I have those uh, sitting down here. I need to do more work, I think, on just going through and double checking all of these pin placements uh, as it sits here. This is maybe a cross between what Phil was using and what the Digilent example is using. I kind of put a, a line here just to remind me that above that, this is all 3, 3 volt. Everything down here is a 1.8 volt. And then I just need to make sure I've got the right signals in the right places. And before there was some conversion down here uh, for an ethernet reset in this int uh, active low to convert those to 3.3. 3. I just actually moved those up to the 3.3 3, uh, bank and took them off of here. And then I have the, all the uh, SD card signals down here. So I think that should be fine. But if I go over to Bovado, and I just go into the, the zinc processing system. You know, this is where I can take a look at all those peripheral pins. And I'll just have to spend a, a bunch of time in here really and say, okay, if I'm going to add uh, whatever it is, I think like this one would be uh, the SD card. So I can look at, you know, what is it using? And I know this is hard. This is hard to see even on my screen, but uh, I can come in here and, and hover over these and see. And in this case, I can see that uh, this pin 40 should be the clock. Pin 41, the command 42 is data zero, data one, data two, data three, etc. You know, I can also come up here and look at Ethernet in the same way and say, okay, if I if I'm going to use Ethernet. Yeah, that is going to be over here to the right, if I'm understanding this correctly. And uh, let's just see, you know, as I as I enable these, um, take a look at that and see, okay, here's my Ethernet 0, uh, and it's expecting on pin 0 to be my transmit clock, transmit data 0, data 1. And so I think I should then be able to go over to my schematic and say, okay, if that was pin 16, and that should be this clock, you know, do I have on my pin 16 transmit clock, which is what I do. And then I have data 0, data 1, data 2, data 3. So again, uh, this is data 0, data 1, data 2, data 3. And so I can just validate what is being used. And then this over here, it looks like I can also, uh, maybe I have to pick a pin down further on that one. Uh, but I can configure these and I just need to make sure that I have the right banks being used based on the voltage because I'll have to choose this as a 1.8 volt, I believe like that. And this one will stay at the 3.3 volt. But then as I enable these uh, different peripherals, you know, whatever they might be, I can just validate that the pins I'm using are going to be workable. So I have work to do just to go through and make sure this is all going to work out okay without having pins either at the wrong voltage or not configurable the way I want to have them configured. So I know I have more work there, but I think this is generally close uh, right now, but may not be entirely uh, perfect, so more to come. So then that is in there with the SD card and that level shifter. So back to my SD card. Again, this is the level shifter I'm using, this TXS02612. Uh, then connecting out to my SD card. So good there. Uh, then I can move down. And I did add in some HDMI components. And there are two components, and I'll, I'll, I have not connected these. I'll work on this in a, in a future week or future video. Uh, but there's this TPD part and this PCA part. But for now, I did put them into the schematic. So when I go to my HDMI, I have a couple of HDMI connectors. And then I have this uh, PCA uh, for uh, voltage, basically, I believe that is. 
And then I also have this uh, TPD, which is maybe more of a protection type of device. So I'll see, I need to read up on those and, and figure out how to get that all connected up. Uh, the reference design from Digilent, I believe, would be leveraging this component, this PCA9306. And then one of you had recommended maybe taking a look at this uh, TPD12S016 uh, just to, to make sure that uh, I'm protecting this device from, from outside stuff coming in. Anyways, uh, that is work I have to do yet. So those components are there so that if I do come in and take a look at my PCB, which is continuing to get messier as I go, I could then look at 3D. And this is how I have things uh, set up right now. Maybe uh, I will comment the HDMI is pulling signals off of banks 34 and 35. And uh, so there's going to be a bunch of these signals that will be used for HDMI, but I'm going to have a lot left over there, I believe. And I still have banks 13 and 33 that uh, I'm not doing anything with. And those will probably go to these 68 pin you know, connectors that I have. And so that will get me to, I think the, these HDMI and their components connect to some pins or balls up here. Uh, and then I'm hoping that uh, these two I've got set up will pull from, you know, this part of the, the BGA. All the RAM is coming from down here. And a lot of this, you know, the USB uh, going through the, uh, the USB 5 for that, uh, the Ethernet, all of that's coming into uh, peripheral I.O. pins, you know, over in this area. Same with this um, mini or this uh, micro SD card and so well, that's why I shifted it over here now instead of being uh, where it was down here in the lower right because I think it's going to be easier to route over here to the left and I did pull this down a little bit down here and of course this all will have to get cleaned up but uh, I did pull this uh, USB-C down and then again I swapped out that USB-B connector for this AB connector here so again I can either plug in a a device into this or I can plug this into a host and have this be the device so this can either be the host or it can be a device and that connector is supposed to be able to let me do both it has a, a selection pin and that would be this uh, this ID pin I believe that gets used to help understand is this a device being plugged in uh, or is this a host being plugged into my my device so that's what that side of that is looking like at the moment. Um, I believe it was recommended, uh, Phil had mentioned, try not to have connectors on two sides of the board like this. But for me, I don't know if it's going to work real well. I probably could get these connectors squeezed in over here and get these regulators moved uh, further away from the edge of the board. That might be fine. But of course, I still have these, these connectors here, these 68-pin expansion connectors. Uh, that are still going to be on the right and top side, most likely based on how I'm I'm going to be routing this. So if I go back and I look at what do I have coming up, then I need to get the HDMI all hooked up, and that would be, you know, these connectors here uh, into or using these these four ICs uh, that will then connect over to to my uh, sock over here. Then in addition to that, you know, I do need to, to really start uh, sizing some of these things, like I mentioned before, resistors, capacitors, shrinking some of those down. And then I do need to spend a whole bunch of time and validate the pins I plan to use and make sure that, again, coming back here to the zinc setup in Vivado, that all of my actual you know, pins on my schematic are going to work out the way I want it to work out. And then I need to go back through reference designs really from top to bottom and just see what am I missing, what am I not thinking of that I should be getting into the schematic before I get to any type of PCB uh, actual placement routing, all that type of stuff. But that's where I'm at. So this is just a quick video just showing that I do have those changes made. So this is what it looks like at the moment. 
Again, if you haven't been following along, you know, a lot of the placements, I'm just dropping things in a general area. This is really sloppy, really messy, but that's the, the work I have to do when I get to the PCB side of things. And I still, you know, I'm not exactly sure which things will make it to the bottom side of my PCB. I'd like to keep as much as possible on top other than passive type of components. But until I actually get in and set up my eight layers and try to do routing, I'm probably not I'm not going to get a good feel for that until until I get there. I did also add this connection up here just for the chassis ground. I suppose that should connect with a wire to a chassis if I have a proper chassis. I don't think I will, so I don't know if that connector would ever get used, but that's what the intention of this connector here is. It's just a, a chassis ground, and I probably uh, should label that, but I've got a lot of labeling to do on this that I haven't gotten to yet. So a lot of uh, detail work to be done yet, but this is starting maybe to get closer as far as the major components are concerned. You know, and again, if I go back to my expansion banks, I need to connect up all of my 13 and 14 to some of these 68 pin connectors. And so I'll have to work through that and see exactly how I want to do that. And then I'll use up some of the pins on 34 and 35 and still have a bunch left over. I don't know if I'll do anything with those or what I might use those for, but seems like there's still quite a bit of I.O. available on this, even with uh, everything that I'm trying to do. But I'm going to stop there. So quick video, and uh, this is what it's looking like. And I need to go through the rest of uh, the course I'm taking from uh, Phil and see what else I'm missing that uh, he might call out as far as the schematic side of things. And then I'm going to go back through that entire course again and pay attention to the PCB side of things. So really, I've just kind of been paying attention to schematic only, not the PCB routing uh, and all of that as much uh, so far.